Welcome to Worship at Zion today. As we gather on this Confirmation Sunday, we uh, begin with our opening hymn number 815. Hymn number 815, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Would you please stand? continue as we claim an affirmation of our own faith with the words of the Apostles Creed. The words are in the worship folder. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated, and I ask the confirmands to stand. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Confirmation Sunday, you make a public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to read God's word and gladly hear and learn it, to strive in all things to live for Jesus Christ our Lord, to honor the sacraments of holy baptism and holy communion, and receive and share these gifts of grace, to serve God with your lives and serve all people.
following the example of Jesus? Your response? Thank you. Family and friends gathered here today, do you promise to support these young people and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Through the laying on of hands, Christ offered the gift of healing to those whom he touched. In the book of Acts, the laying on of hands continued with the healing power of Christ. But in other places, Acts chapter 6, verses 2 and 6, and Acts 13, 1 through 3, the laying on of hands signified a commissioning of people for the work of spreading the gospel message and the work of Christ. In this service, we send these servants of Christ into the world to proclaim his presence in their lives. Please come forward to kneel at the altar as your names are read. I will invite parents and sponsors, other guests, as uh, family has decided to come forward uh, to join them at the altar for the blessing and the laying on of hands. First to the altar, I invite Griffin Thomas Almquist, Victoria Rebecca Butler, Logan Carl Feedy, and Paul Michael Gallatin. You may be seated. Family and sponsors, please. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Griffin Thomas Almquist the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. A man heart plains his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Victoria Rebecca Butler the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongs love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth it it, it always protects always trusts always hopes always preserves love never fails father in heaven for jesus sake Stir up in Logan Carl Feedy the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heaven, heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Paul Michael Gallatin the gift of your Holy Spirit. 
Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love cover, covers over all wrongs. I invite the following to come forward. Dylan Carl Caro, Ty Stephen Margolovsky, Grady Tom Maccabee, McKenna Lynn Miller, and families, please. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Dylan Carl Carroll the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, will never leave you nor forsake you. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ty Stephen Margolovsky the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will, will be with you wherever you go. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Grady Tom Maccabee the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his life, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in McKenna Lynn Miller the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song.
and I invite the following to come forward to the altar. Joshua John Oman, Isaiah John Randall, Wyatt Donald Roshnot, Isabella Marion Schaller, and families, please. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Joshua John Oman the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Isaiah John Randall the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Your sun will never set again and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your glory will be and your God will be your glory. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Wyatt Donald Roshnot the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Isabella Marion Schaller the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will ever see the Lord. And we continue as we pray. <clears throat> as our children are baptized, parents, baptismal sponsors, family members, and our entire church family promise to instruct them in the Christian faith. We ask your special blessing on all who have shared the faith and prayed for these young men and women. 
May this church faithfully and steadfastly share the word of grace and love, hope, and salvation so that we might all join together to proclaim the living word, Jesus Christ, where we live and throughout the world. May we serve you more faithfully each day so that Christ's presence would shine through our lives. Amen. Good morning. These are the readings for our Confirmation Sunday today. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. From John 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And our third reading is from 1 John 1, verses 5 through 9. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and pure us, purify us from all unrighteousness. Here ends the readings.
Thank you all so much for that beautiful song, a beautiful prayer. As um, we look at our announcements, our announcements today become three invitations. Okay, the first invitation is during our worship today as we receive Holy Communion, everyone who is here is welcome to the Lord's table. It is Jesus who invites us to receive this bread and wine. Jesus is the one who gave his body and blood. This is a gift for the forgiveness of all our sins, and so we are all welcome to participate. As you come forward by the center aisle for Holy Communion, just a note that the offering will be taken at that time. The box in the center of the aisle will be a place where offering may be given. Uh, other announcements or other uh, invitations. Next Sunday, after our Family Connect worship, we are having a congregational meeting, and as winter is coming on, we are guessing, we need to talk about our furnaces. Oops, sorry. Just when you think you get one thing paid for, another thing goes to the dogs. So, but we got to talk about that. That is our responsibility as a congregation to do that. So everyone is welcome to that in the fellowship hall following our Family Connect worship next week. Also, we have coming up on Thursday, November 8th, our um, 12th annual Norwegian Meatball Dinner. And it is free to all who are uh, able to come. We invite everyone. There will be a free will offering taken, uh, but uh, it is uh, an open invitation to everyone. So if you're here today, spread the word. It's good stuff. Confirmation Sunday. I know that at the end of the service, many of you are going to meet these young men and women out in the hallway, and you will congratulate them and this great accomplishment on attaining this goal. And I encourage you to do that because these are amazing young men and women and they have shown a level of commitment that many of their peers will not. But I am going to ask you to hold on to something now. You're all sitting down, so that's a good thing, but I've got to tell you something and I'm afraid I have to break it to you in the only way I know how and it's quickly. It's like, it's like pulling a band-aid off a sore. You don't do it slowly, you just all at once. So there are no misunderstandings. These young people have not accomplished anything. True they've been here most every Wednesday evening for two years. And true, we have played many variations of America's latest game show craze over the last couple of years. And true, they have read God's word together and shared their faith with each other now these two years. But confirmation is not an accomplishment. If it were an accomplishment, then they would be done. It is accomplished. It is finished. And I pray to God that they are not done in their fellowship, that they are not done with their reading of God's word and sharing their faith. And honestly, I have invited every one of them to keep coming back on Wednesday nights because I do enjoy their presence. Uh, but there are no takers yet. So I, I'm kind of getting the feeling that our Wednesday night thing is, is over. It has been a lot of fun, for me at least. Now, if you think of accomplishments, um, this is not done. I want you to think in terms of we are, we continue to accomplish. We are accomplishing the work of faith. This is an ongoing thing as we live our lives. As we prepared for this day, I asked each one of our young people to write a paper, not a theological dissertation, but a brief paper to respond to some questions about their faith and how their faith is lived out day to day in their lives. What is confirmation? One person said confirmation is pledging yourself to God and to the church. 
Another said confirmation is when one who is baptized declares their Christian faith. That is what we are doing here today. Gathering, not just to hear these young people confess their Christian faith, to publicly declare that Jesus Christ is their Lord, but each one of us is here to do exactly the same thing. And we do that not just on this Confirmation Sunday, but we do that every time we gather for worship as brothers and sisters in faith. We belong together. We live in the presence of God, and God shows us the way to go from here so we are all accomplishing our faith. But it's not done yet. God gathers with us. God knows that we have a purpose in this life, and on this earth, God has given us that purpose. Each one of us has a purpose. As I was putting the service together, I chose those three Bible readings about the light of God. And as we acknowledge the light, we realize that light because we have also realized times of darkness. We all understand darkness. But beyond the darkness, it's difficult to see your own hand in front of your face. The path is not always very clear when you are walking in darkness. Consider the things of darkness that come our way every single day. We see hatred in this world. We see fighting and war and divisions among people. We see oppression and anger and name-calling. We see scheming and positioning for power, one person over another. But enough of our political ads on TV. <laughs> if you know me, I'm easily distracted, right? But we all know darkness when we see it, right? We all know darkness. And I would guess that most of us don't like the darkness. And Jesus then beseeches us each to walk in the light to put darkness away, to shine a beacon of hope into this world. And I think that's why we are here too. To challenge darkness, but not to be so self-congratulatory that we think we can destroy darkness with our own powers. For the powers of darkness are able to swallow any one of us whole. It's easy to fall into that hole. So God tells us, do not fight darkness alone. Do not fight darkness alone. Jesus gives us words of light and life and eternal life. And he has gone that way of darkness much farther than any one of us will ever have to go. And because of Jesus' journey into hell, to subdue the prince of darkness, Jesus tells us the way through this life, and it is never alone. We walk together, brothers and sisters in Christ, and Christ promised that he would lead the way. That's why we're here today also, to hear the word and to dedicate and to rededicate our lives to Jesus Christ and to ask his Holy Spirit to be our guide. And he said he would. He said he would lead the way. He said he would shine light on all of our paths. But even more than that, Jesus said he would shine that light directly into our own lives and deeply into our souls. And then the most amazing thing of all can happen, the light of Christ can shine through us, and we become lights for the world so that others can see. The work of faith is never, never accomplished. We continue every day. In the confirmation paper, one of these young people said that, Mom, 
Moms have names too, but mom works in this case. Mom showed him how to give his frustrations to God. And I say, thank you, mom. Thank you, parents, for love, who lovingly include the path of Jesus Christ as an option for your children to follow. This is a way they learn to follow, by watching you. And they do it best when parents and grandparents and friends all come together and faith is at the heart of who we are. Faith is learned. Many others spoke of the Bible verse, 1 John 4, verse 8, God is love. And how they try to shine that love into the world through kind actions and through the words that they speak, through respect, through simple things like a hug or standing with someone during a difficult times, through sharing not only of our own kind words, but sharing God's words of love and life and new life. And one of our kids, kids hit the nail on the head and, he sa and said, I can do little things that really do change the world. I believe that's true. And that work is not done. It is a lifelong task. We have never accomplished that work of faith. It is lifelong. But that too is why we are here. We are here to change the world. But we do not change the world through the dark things we see every day. We change the world through kindness and love only when we follow Jesus Christ. Can we walk through that valley to hell and back into this life? This is new life. This is God's word. And the fact of the matter is that none of us accomplish anything on our own. But Christ does it all, and he chooses to do it through the likes of you and me. The writer of Psalm 119 acknowledges that God's word shed that needed light on the paths of our lives. In John chapter 8, Jesus said that he is the light of the world, and as we get to know Jesus better and better, we come to believe that his words are true. And we desire that light so that we don't have to live long in darkness. I want to thank these young people for shining the light of Christ for me. I've seen it in you. And I continue to grow in faith and I continue to learn by observing the lives of others. And what these young people have shown me is worth repeating. I am inspired by you. I hope you know that as you go through this life, you can seek that light of Christ through each other. It is not good to walk alone and fellowship and faith are blessings beyond what any words can express. Amen. As we prepare to receive this gift of grace, this Holy Communion that Christ himself gave to us, we hear these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we pray our Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I ask our confirmands to come forward, make a half circle up here. Darlene Olson, if you would come up to help serve. Um, each of the young people, make way so Darlene can get through here too. Uh, each of the young people receive a, uh, a special handmade uh, communion goblet today. It is made by local potter, John Anka. It's a gift to you all from Darlene. And we will serve. blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
After our service, the uh, confirmation class will be meeting out in the hallway greeting you. And I'm, I'm inviting you all to come back in here if you'd like to take some group pictures or whatever. Um, so come back in as soon as you are able. We hear this benediction from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus that in every way you were enriched in him with all speech and all knowledge, even as a testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end. Guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We go in peace now to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn, number 715, Christ be our light. for truth we turn to you make us your own your holy people light for the world to see Christ be our light shine in our hearts shine through the darkness Christ be our light shine in your church gather today Longing for peace, 
our world is troubled, longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us, make us your living voice. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church gathered today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for shelter, many are homeless. Longing for warmth, many are cold. Make us your building, sheltering others, walls made of living stone. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, signs of your kingdom come. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today.